Just a heads up, uh, my phone ran out of memory, so the wing bill video will be a two-parter. I'll upload it and then uh, delete all that video off my phone and then finish the wing off and make a part two of the wing build. So just so you know, you know, it'll be done. Welcome back to Frank's Model Aviation Workshop. This is part three in the Carl Goldberg Tiger II build series. This episode will be starting on the wing. I haven't decided whether I want to do it in two parts or just do a complete wing build in one part. We'll see how long it goes. But uh, if you like this type of content, consider subscribing to my channel. Hit that notification bell so that you can be notified of future episodes of this build and other builds. And like, be sure and like and share my videos. I'd really appreciate it. So without further ado, let's get started on this wing. Okay, so the first thing they want us to do is to take a quarter inch dowel, wrap some fine sandpaper in it, and sand a groove in the center. That's where the dowel, the dowel pin is going to go. So uh, I think I'm going to see how much I have here to play with. Which... There's not much, don't have hardly any. So I'm gonna just go ahead and and do it. I was gonna see if I can't like shave a little bit off just to make it nice. I think I might make that the center. The squarest end. There we go. That'll work out, I guess. Let's see what this thing looks like. Yeah, we'll do that in. Okay, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to draw a center line down through here on both of them. That way I have a guide to do the sandpaper trick. And I'm going to start the groove with my permagrit needle file. I'll just start it and then we'll use the sandpaper on the quarter inch dowel to finish it. Okay, so before I drew the line, I put my my uh, leading edge in my miter box and I took my sanding block and I just did the old you know, square it off thingy with the, with the sanding block. That way I know this is perfectly square. Did the same thing with this one and I drew my center line. I also compared the two lengths and they're exactly the same length. So I know both halves of my wing will be the exact same length. So now we'll start to do the grooves. Hard to do this. Try to keep it in the camera. 
You just take your time and do it a little bit at a time. It looks... That's a good start to that one. We'll do this one now. I'm just kind of eyeballing while I'm sanding it on both sides as best you can, you know, it's pretty tough. Okay, that's two of them now. I'm gonna, well, I'll use a little bit more of it. The idea is to get that big enough to where that dowel will slide right in there. So we'll get to going on this. And basically you just do half the dowel width. What I'll do when I'm done, I'll uh, put the two together and see if the dowel will fit down in there. I'm just using light pressure on it and I'm flipping it. Do a little bit on one side, making sure you're centered. Like on this side, it's got that V. Just make sure you're centered on it and flip it and center on the part where the where they were joined together by that strip of balsa. see what that looks like. I think it's actually a 5 16th inch dowel that you need to use. I need to look. Yeah, that's quarter inch. That's big enough. However, I think they should have had a smaller dowel wrapped in uh, sandpaper instead of the actual size, because that leaves quite a gap. So I'm gonna just do a little bit more on this one. Just to make sure it looks even. We're gonna call that good, that's a, a circle. Okay, so the way the instructions say is you each wing has separate. So it says to start off the scissor pin, a uh, spar, wing spar. I'm gonna use the straightest ones for the bottom. Flip 
flush with the wing's center line. I should cut that off a little bit anyway. Maybe I'll wait. I'll cut it off later. Make sure they're all the same way. Yeah. Okay. Whenever I scissor pin, I go uh, the first pin, I go off of the spar a little bit by about an eighth of an inch. Then I push it back and put the other pin in. That way it's got some spring tension holding it down. See, it won't move now. happy with that by the way I, I laid down wax paper forgot to mention that you can use saran wrap or wax paper I've just been using wax paper so long I'd like to try that saran wrap trick but I don't have a decent saran wrap my saran wrap is the cheapo junk that you get so it doesn't like lay nice all right got that flush with the center line now we're going to start to get the ribs pinned in place. Okay, as with all, or at least all the uh, Carl Goldberg kits that I've built, you have to tape on both sides of the tab ribs. I'm not going to pin them in yet until I get the uh, trailing edge ready to go. I'll have to separate these. They come, or this kit came together. A lot of them, you know, because they're old, will come already broke apart. Sometimes they're even warped. But I lucked out on this one. They're pretty arrow straight. So I'll get these separated and then I'll bring you back and we'll show you putting the trailing edge on. Okay, so basically what I got here, I got the trailing edge on the tabbed ribs. I haven't pinned anything down yet because I'm going to do it a little different than what the plans say. But I'm also going to have to install all these other ribs at the same time. So what I'm going to do, I'll get all these placed and you know where the laser stops, you know, they leave a little ridge. So I'm just lightly sanding that ridge off, a little bump or whatever. Just enough to get it off there. I don't want to change the airfoil shape, so I'm just just sanding it just enough to get that little edge off. I 
and then we'll get everything placed on the on the plan and we'll secure the ribs the way I'm going to secure them because I don't like putting pins through ribs because they end up breaking half the time so I'm going to do a little different there's a damaged rib it's got a little dent in it I could probably get that dent out well no that's not a dent that looks like a I'll just leave it. Should put this one towards the tip. That way the, the tip that's glued on will strengthen that weak spot. So as you can see this, you can probably see it in the, in the light. It's got a dent in it. I'm going to put that toward the wing tip. That way the wingtip gluing on that will strengthen it. So we'll get all these ribs placed. And I'm basically centering them in the uh, trailing edge. And I have a right angle block here to keep me from going past center. You can see it'll stop. Once I get all these ribs placed, I'm going to Put something back here to keep this perfectly straight because the trailing edge to me is one of the most important places in an airplane to keep straight you can deal with a little bow on the leading edge because that's not going to affect the flight like a warp trailing edge will because it'll cause your aileron to do all kinds of weird stuff And I'm, I'm making them flush with the top of this trailing edge. These kits, Goldberg kits, are so easy to build. I probably make them more complicated than they than they really are. But don't worry. When you build them, they'll be uh, an easy build. Those of you that have watched my P40 build have seen these. This is what's going to help me keep that trailing edge arrow straight. But you got to watch because those tabs on the one rib stick out. So. Now I'm going to take, I'll leave that for a second, make sure it's straight, which it is. Now I'll put this block back. So now we know this trailing edge is straight, this bottom spar is straight. And you can also use something like this to well, to make sure everything stays where it's supposed to stay. The 
but you got to be careful. Okay, well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and glue these trailing edges on with thin CA. I'm going to run a little bead of thin CA down the trailing edge. Double checking my centering here. I think I'm going to secure the back side of these things so they don't move. So we'll leave that on there for now to so they get these all centered. I'm going to do these ribs one at a time. I'm going to use these to keep them square or perpendicular to the plan. And I'm eyeballing the plan drawing down the rib. So what I'm going to be doing is making sure the rib is straight and parallel to whatever that rib is. It doesn't have to be right on. It doesn't have to be right on the line. Just make sure it's parallel. Okay, so without boring you too much, <clears throat> I went ahead and placed all my my right angle pieces. So all these ribs are perfectly parallel to the rib drawing. May not be perfectly on, but they are perfectly parallel. And all of my trailing edges are perfectly straight. Next thing we're going to do, we're going to wick thin CA in each trailing edge on both sides. See, I use thin CA for a quick adhesion, and then I'll go back through with medium CA and put like a little fillet. And then I'll add, before I put that thin CA on, I will like press down on the rib up here to make sure that it's on the plan and on the spar. That way I don't accidentally glue one angled upwards. So we'll go ahead and start doing those trailing edges. Let's start with the inboard. And I hate the way they have you tape these tabs because I'm going to be gluing the tab on. The 
It's down on the table. I think what I might do is also go ahead and put a little glue on the rib where it rests on top of the spar. And always double check your center too before you glue. I hate using this thin CA is so thin it's hard to control it. I glued my ruler to it. Okay, now I'm going to go through with the medium CA and back all that up. Wrong CA.
I'm just in rib. I only put glue on the inside because it'll make it easier to sand the other side. Okay, so that's that. I should be able to take this off. Oops. I told you, glue it to it. Probably done with, I'll leave that on there. Let's see, what's the next deal? Okay, the next step is to use this setback gauge and place it on the wing center line and place this top spar. Let's see what we got here for straightness. They're all pretty good. Okay, so. Start here in the center, and depending on these pins, I might have to move them. Just slowly work that spar in. You don't want to break any ribs. Just slowly easing it in, starting from the center. And make sure it's flush with the top of each rib. This pin's in the way, so I'm going to bend it down a little bit. Check the dimensions on this. See if it's the same. Yeah. All right, so we got that, and there's still there's still ninety degrees from the table. Nothing's binding. Setback gauge is set back. <laughs> so I'm going to do the thin CA trick. We'll go through and, and glue the top spar with thin CA first, then go through and reinforce with medium CA, and then we'll move on to the leading edge. I'm going to hold it down while I thin CA it. And with thin CA, you don't have to go on either side of the rib because it's going to get through there.
This will be my second Tiger II. I really like my first one. But it went in like all my planes. Now we'll go through and do the medium CA. Medium CA I do on all sides. I'm trying not to do a whole lot of fast speed stuff unless it's like sanding or something like that. But uh, I think it'd be interesting for people to see how long it takes to make one of these things. I mean, there's a lot of people that bust through them really fast, but I like to just take my time because this is relaxing to me to, to build something. Everybody's got their way of relaxing. So now to do the front or the leading edge, I already have my 90 set back to the center line. Yeah, I'm gonna fix it a little bit better. Now what I'm going to do is I'll use my dealios here to hold that against it. That way I can get them on there straight. Oops, wrong one. <laughs> Could probably get rid of that, but I'll keep it in there. So that's that, they're all in the V, pushed up against the center. So I'm gonna do my thin CA trick and then we'll do the medium CA. And I'm not gonna put a lot of medium CA because I don't want it to like drool down to the other side. When I flip the wing over, that's when I'll reinforce the underside. Same with uh, under here on the spar, I'll put glue on there too. So we'll get at this. A longer tip on that.
And I'm just going to put a drop on each side. Okay, the next step is to do the top sheeting. I'm going to let this dry for a little while and then we'll get at that. Okay, as you can see here, I got most of the weights off of it and the steel things. Uh, and I pushed a pin in the ends of the bottom spar to keep it steady. I took my scissor pins out during the sheeting. We're, they're going to have us sheet the front leading edge and the trailing edge. And it says in the plans to do the front first, but as you can see, if you press on this, that's gonna wanna move. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do the trailing edge first, weight it, and then do the front. That way, since I got the weight on the trailing edge, I can push on this, and it's not going to do any any warpage or anything. So we'll get started with that. Okay, so before we get started cheating the leading edge and trailing edge of the wing, I wanted to give a helpful tip, and it's pretty important. When you're doing your sheeting, you want to always sand your sheeting off of the airframe before you put it on. The reason behind this is if you, if you wait until after it's on the wing to sand, you're going to get a, a ripple effect in between the ribs and it, it'll show right through your covering. Also, the, if you sand it ahead of time, you don't have to worry about sanding it when it's on the wing. The only thing you'll need to sand is the seam where it, it, it uh, connects to the leading edge, that molded leading edge, and you have plenty of balsa there to sand. Do not sand anywhere near the sheeting itself. That goes for the trailing edge as well. And I'm going to pre-sand this before we get started. Okay, so what we want to do is go through the wood and pick the nicest sheets for the top. I think these two look pretty good, so we'll use those for the top. And the trailing is the same thing. You want to pick the nicest for the top. So this is going to do the top and the bottom of the right wing. So what I'm going to do... Since we're doing the uh, top first, I'll just do one set. If this is for the top side, we'll set that aside. So I'm just going to put these together. And you see how it's, how it's got a warp in it. That will be taken care of. We can You can do one or two things. What I might do is swap that out with another one. That's closer. I'm thinking about uh, trimming it a little bit off just to make it nice and uh, even. We'll see. But uh, anyway, what we want to do, I got a sanding bar with 220 on there. And I'm just going to lightly sand both of them smooth. Just a little bit. That's all you need to do. And that 
think we got a bad spot out of here. Dang it. Might save that for the bottom. So there's the top two. I'm not gonna stand on the other side, no need. Okay, so I'm gonna get set up to glue the trailing edge piece on. What I'm gonna do here is mark the rib right where that trailing edge piece is so that I don't put glue past that. Matter of fact, I'm going to leave glue slightly before that line so that uh, when I put my cap strips on, it will uh, not have a big glue glob to have to cut off. So I'm going to set this aside. And what we need to do first is sand this top edge or top part. Because you know you have little raised edges where those ribs are. So we want to sand them just a little bit. Just enough to even it out. And sand it lightly because you don't want to break your ribs. I think I might get my smaller. these back because I'm going to use these as a backer. Double check and straighten this. All right, put this back here. I'll run a bead along this edge and just up to the mark. Making sure when I put these, this trailing edge on, I want to butt it up against this metal as well.
whenever you press on your sheeting, you want to make sure you use something that spreads the weight across. You don't want to use your hands because it could cause you to glue in a, a ripple. That there is glued on. Okay. Now, we can take a yardstick or whatever and stick it on here. And we can weigh that down now. I'm just gonna put two on here just to that should be good enough. Okay, so now see now I can press on this. And it's not doing anything. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put tape on here to hold that front. I'm gonna flip it over and then run my glue. And I only need to glue this very edge of the leading it or the top spar because <clears throat> the uh, it doesn't cover the whole spar. flip that over like that and flip right back down where it's supposed to be shouldn't have to wet that it's not that big of a big of a curve so let's get at it
what I'm doing here is getting rid of the excess glue along that. I don't, I don't want to be able to set my cat strips right in there. So that's the uh, leading edge and trailing edge sheeting. So I can go ahead and unweight this. I can even take these out. Uh oh, they're glued. Still want to keep that in there yet, I think. So I get those cap strips on there. You always want to keep your airframe secure so it doesn't flex at all while you're doing anything because you could uh, induce a warp. So I'm just going to leave it. I got this over here just to hold that end and this is holding that end so it doesn't shift while I'm putting my cat strips on. Okay. All right, so we take cap strip material. And what I like to do, just so I know I'm centered over the rib, I'll just put a little, just a little hint mark on each of the ribs. That tip rib just, it gets flush with the rib anyway, so I don't have to do that. So I'll do one, and then I'll do the rest in fast speed. Just like that. I like to have them just a, sh a hair longer so you can have a tight fit and you just press down on the center and it'll, it'll be in there. Capture some there yet. Good thing I looked. Forgot about my center sheeting.
So we'll start the cap strips here. Perfect fit. I can just hear the comments now. Oh, I about messed up.
This is just a fine sandpaper on a popsicle stick to smooth out all your cap strips. I'm not sure doing it in fast speed. more to go on this part and then we'll do the center sheeting.
Okay, now for the center sheet. Okay, so I got my center sheeting pieces and I've got them placed right where they need to be. And this center section here is supposed to wedge in between these. Well, as you can see, that's where it wedges. So what I'm gonna have to do, I'm gonna have to take part of the sheet that this came out of, I'm gonna cut a piece and we're gonna customize our own piece. And I'm gonna take, I'm gonna, once I get it cut to the right size, I'm gonna take and take it off of the plane and we will uh, glue them off the frame, off the plane, sand them nice and smooth, and then glue this entire thing on at one time. So I'll get set up to do that. So I got my center sheeting cut to size. I did it oversized here and it's all oversized on this side. So I'm gonna take this off and we're going to glue it together on this side, sand a little bit, and then we'll turn on this side, sand this nice and smooth, and then we'll glue this on. So you've seen me seam, uh, you know, seam balsa in other videos, so check out my P40 series. I do that in there quite a bit. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do this off camera, and then I'll get right back to you. Okay, I got my sheeting sanded I'm getting ready to glue it on so what I'm going to do I'll run glue here along the ribs I'm going to leave this unglued because I'm going to take some thin CA and just wick it in there so we will most likely just tape this yeah we'll tape it on It's a good, good fit. All right, so we'll tape it up here and then flip it back on itself. All right, here we go. Using my T-bar sander to do the gluing or to hold down the sheeting so it doesn't warp itself. What I'm feeling for, I just want the bare minimum ridge. I know I'm going to have one because 
it's you know these aren't the same thickness exactly so that feels pretty close so now I won't do the thin CA on there This wing half is complete. Well, we gotta cut the thing flush. Okay. Now we draw the cut line. We cut this. This is already being cut. Then I gotta cut the tip off. So we're being, we're done here with with this wing half. Fresh blade in the knife. Put some tape on the back side of my ruler to keep it from walking. Or at least help it. Here's that. Nice. All right, now we'll work on getting that wing tip trimmed up. Same deal over here. You just got to keep willing away at it. It's going to be hard because you can't see. Perfect. All 
I cut them a little long so you can always sand back. I think what I'm going to do is leave these long because it's the tip until I get it flipped over. Well, I'm going to have to trim it. It's going to have to go because we've got those jig tabs that are going to go in there. Okay, I'll save these. You never know when you need that kind of stuff. I save all scraps until the, until the model's finished. All right, so that's that. That finishes up that wing half. So. Next wing half, <clears throat> next wing half, I'm going to do all in fast speed. I'll film it, but it'll all be in time lapse so you can see it being built. And I'll pick back up when we join the wing halves. Okay, uh, I got a tip here, lesson I just learned. When you're seaming balsa together, do not use frog tape. There's something about the adhesive on the back of that that if any CA gets on there, it leaves adhesive behind and you it's hard to sand it off you almost can't get it off so just use masking tape whenever you're seaming balsa together no frog tape luckily i was able to salvage the center sheeting that's where it happened uh, even on the inside you can see there's like a residue left and it's, you can't sand it flat even, it just stays raised up. So I was able to get it fixed and uh, we'll press on. So my uh, phone is filling up with memory and it's cutting out on me when I'm filming. So I'm thinking I'm going to make this a two-parter. So we'll see. I'll go as far as I can, but we'll still continue with the wing.
Okay, there we have it. We got two wing halves, sheeted, cap stripped, and semi final sanded. I did some sanding on the center joint so where it'll be nice and neat. But uh, the tips still need sanded flat before we put the tips on. Next step, we got to build these. Uh, I guess you call them jigs. We'll get them built, put on the plan, and then uh, I'll get right back to you. Okay, I got these jig tabs glued up, and now I'm going to let them set cure real good before I put these wing halves together. I'll be right back. Okay, I got the <clears throat> jig tips pinned in place, center pinned in place, and this tip pinned in place. We gotta work on getting this gap. It's perfect right here along the seam, but I gotta close these gaps. So that's what I'm gonna be working on right now. But it don't look too bad. It's a nice narrow dihedral. So we'll get to working on that. In order to close that gap up. I'm going to use my permagrit because it's nice and flat and semi-coarse. I'll take a wing panel and I'll just slowly whittle away at that top, at the top uh, sheeting and stuff until they close up nice. So we'll do, just do one panel at a time. A little bit on each panel. Check it out now and then. And I'll do this side. I'm gonna make them even. getting there. bit more on this side, that shouldn't do it.
too there. All trial and error, or not trial and error, but trial until you get her perfect. <coughs> That's pretty dang good, I think. I think what I need to do is take a little bit off that top spar. We'll do both top spars, that way they're even. I think I'm going to live with that. It looks pretty snazzy. And I think what I'm going to do before I uh, put those center braces in, I'm going to put just a little bit of CA on that center sheeting to hold them together. Doesn't say to do that, but that's what I'm going to do. I have these that go on here. Another piece. Good work. Oh. Now I'm probably going to epoxy these on because it's, that doesn't have like a, a perfect place to, there's like a step here, a little step. So I'm going I'm to epoxy these. I might put a little piece of wax paper right there. Just to keep the uh, glue from sticking to that thing.
Okay, now I'll do that. tools here eventually. And the clamps. Oxy cup. Come on, Grams. I'm using 30 minute epoxy.
I want it to gush out of there. That'll be these two. Try to keep that a little neat right there by the center joint because those ribs go there. Well, there's no warp in this wing. That's awesome. Okay, now I'll put this on. Glued up, 30 minute epoxy. And let that cure for 30 minutes and then I'll be back in. Looks pretty good. Next step is going to be doubling up those center ribs for the dowel and all that stuff. So we'll get that taken care of when I get back. Okay, so the next step in the build is to put the shear webs in place, which go from the wing tip 
to the just before you get to the center section. So we'll get doing that. I'm first going to start by placing them. So I'll have to hunt for them later. I'm only going to show one side of the wing, the other side is identical. front forward forward part of the uh, spars where the sheeting is going to be covering and I like to put liberal glue on these just to make sure they're on there good pushing them down onto the sheeting and gluing them to the spars. I'm using medium CA by the way. In case anybody's wondering. I'm centering them. They probably don't have to be centered perfectly, but I'm centering them in between the uh, in between the ribs best I can. And I'm applying the uh, glue to the spar. If anybody ever has any questions on, on regards to anything, uh, put it down in the comments. And I, I read my comments daily, or almost more than daily. But uh, I always look to see if anybody commented, so I can so I can uh, at least give you an answer as quick as possible. Okay, that's the shear webs on the underside of the right wing. I'll do the left wing and then I'll get back to you. This is basically what the shear webs look like.
The next step, we're going to be sandwiching these forward rib halves, putting them in here, and sandwiching these aft rib halves, putting them in here. And they're not going to fit perfect, so some of them will have to be adjusted, and I might have to add balsa on either side of one of one of them just so it'll uh, seat in there correctly and get a good glue joint so let's start doing that so i'm using medium ca And I'll have to adjust this to fit this perfectly. And I'm going to adjust the front part because this back part has a spot to uh, allow that disc to come in. What I'm going to do so that I know that I'm getting it centered, I'm going to put a center of this back part. Put a little dash with a marker on either side. Then I'll set the center of the front. That way I know I get it on there straight. Now I'll run a bead of glue. See, that'll sit in there just like that. Right. Matter of fact, next thing, I got a drill, quarter inch hole in this disc, and then place it in there. Okay, so we'll dry fit this first. Basically just like that. What I'm going to do for the dowel, I'm going to chuck this in my drill and I'm going to round this end off with some sandpaper. And there we have the rounded end. So I'll put that in there. This will all be glued together. So, what I'm going to do first, I'm going to glue that disc on center. And then we'll glue the dowel in.
using medium CA, of course. You only got to hold it for a few seconds. Just running a reinforcement fillet underneath here. Probably not really necessary. All right, next is to sandwich the top two and put them in. fits perfectly so I don't have to adjust anything. So I'm gonna run the bead. All right, next up is these. Find the other one. Oh, so. Sandwich these two together and they get glued in, centered in the back here. Like I said earlier, I'm going to have to probably add
there's a little epoxy fillet right here so i'm just make it to where i can bring this all the way back and just cut it or sand it a little bevel right there i want to glue it just like this and then i'll put square stock along each side up here to uh, strengthen that up I don't even really need to use square stock. I can just use this stuff here. After I get this in, I'll bring you over and show you. I'm going to use thin CA to tack those in. Trying not to glue my hands to the, to the plane. I'm just using this medium CA to create a fillet. And I'm just sanding that flush to the top of the rib.
take my long T-bar and I'm going to go over top of the ribs slightly, just lightly, just to make sure that there's no rough spot. <coughs> okay, here's the completed center ribs. Got my two halves with the dowel sandwiched in there, sanded round the front of the dowel. I put my rear or my aft sandwich rib in there and you notice it was it was short so I just put a couple 16 inch pieces of balsa wood there cut and I glued them in made sure I got a lot of glue in in the hole there to hold it but it's all reinforced glue next step is the forward sheeting and the trailing edge sheeting I'm gonna do that in fast speed because I already went through it on the top so uh, we'll get set up to do that All right, there's the sheeting, leading edge, trailing edge, and center. Next up is putting in the <coughs> landing gear doublers, just like that. We'll get them mounted in. There's areas that need addressed uh, before covering, like got a little ridge here, I think, because the balsa is thicker than this. This one turned out pretty good. And I got a little uh, ridge here that I'm gonna have to fill and square off with filler before I cover. So that's what's gonna happen there. I'll get ready and uh, get set up and put those landing gear doublers in and I'll be right back with you. Okay, I gathered up all my landing gear pieces. Here's for the landing gear wire to go into the wing. These pieces will go in here, but I'm gonna have to square this off, cut this little uh, fillet or fill it off on both sides. And I'm gonna have to sand, they won't fit in there, so I'm gonna have to sand one end, which will be this end, because I need that 3 16 end to be whole. So it'll go in there, so we'll get this all, both of these fitted. I'm going to fit these first pre and pre uh, fit all the landing gear pieces prior. Now the way this thing's going to end up is this is going to be recessed. So I'll have a 16th inch recess of this piece, which I don't really like. So I'm going to probably modify it to where it sits flush with the skin best I can, maybe. And uh, that way I don't have to put a bunch of filler on the landing gear. Or I could just stack uh, balsa on top of this. I guess I could do that. I think I might do that. I'll just put it, do it the way it is. And then I'll just use balsa sheet to cover it. That way it'll get flush. The last Tiger II I built, I piled on a bunch of filler and sanded it to shape. And it, it worked. It looked all right. But I'm going to do it uh, with the balsa sheeting this time. So we'll get set up and uh, get these things all fitted. I'm gonna start off by squaring this off. All right, that'll be for that. Now we'll test fit this.
what I'm doing here is I'm just, the uh, slot that they put in here is a little bit off from the actual groove. So I'm just making sure that the, uh, the slot and the groove line up. So I'm taking some material off of this end. Using a needle file. So we'll place this and see how much we got to take off. What I did there is I just put a little round corner because I have like a glue fillet, fillet right there. So I want to get it tight to the spar. So right there is where it's going to sit. So I need to take off maybe a, a 32nd or a 64th on this end. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to place this in my square here or in my miter box. And I'm just going to I have just a little bit sticking out and I'll take my permagrit and flatten her out. Take, just take a little bit off at a time. Just till it goes down in there nice. And I got a uh, glue fillet right here in the rim. I need to get that off there. Got a ways to go. Okay, there's a good fit, but I want to, I got to take some more off of that, or I could just do the old round the corner on there. Let's try that. There. That's a nice fit right there. All right, got that. Now, I got to take these blocks and I got to glue them on to these braces. This is the landing gear block. This landing gear goes down in. So I got to glue them on precisely like that. And uh, I'll do that and then we'll come back to you so what I did to get my <clears throat> block in the right spot I went ahead and I traced around it with some pencil I put my glue on the block this side medium CA and then I'll uh, just glue it on clamp it up for a little bit I might use epoxy actually we'll do that to make it a little stronger I'm just going to eyeball this 30 minute epoxy. Maybe close enough. Don't need a whole lot to glue these things on, so I'm just gonna 
mix up a small amount. I buy these little plastic cups. They're like uh, condiment cups you can get at Walmart. Just so uh, I have a bunch of disposable epoxy mixer cups. And these are just craft sticks that I use to stir with. And I picked up some epoxy brushes at the local hobby shop. Make sure they're on there, right? Make sure you get them lined up right where you had them. Then I'm going to clamp them up. So that's one. We'll do this other one now. It's got to line up with that top edge there and flush with this flat edge where the landing gear block goes. And I, I always like to check and make sure they look the same. They do. All right, we'll let that set up and we'll get back in here and uh, epoxy them into the wing. So for those of you building the laser cut kit, there is a discrepancy here. It shows to put these things in there on the rib, flush with the uh, top of the rib. And then the landing gear block has that cutout notch there as well as the uh, landing gear hole. But if you look at these, they don't have that. So when you put your this block on top of the on top of the brace or the doubler or whatever it is, it's going to cover that hole. So I'm going to have to extend this notch all the way in another 3 16th of an inch in order for the landing gear to even be able to be used so 
that'll be a modification you might want to think about. And I know a lot of guys are changing these to tail draggers, but I'm just going to keep mine as per the kit. Here's what I'm talking about. You can see that plywood doubler there. It's going to cover that hole, so I got to extend this notch back in another 3 16ths of an inch. The original Carl Goldberg kit had the correct notch in there. Had like a big square or rectangle cut out in the hole. So we'll make that modification here soon before I get it epoxied in. So there it is with the modification. And whenever you uh, do that, you'll have to put a round curve right there. You see in the inner groove there, I rounded it so the bend on the wire will fit in there nicely and it'll make your landing gear flush with the top. So that's that. Once these cure, we'll get them glued in and uh, we'll get to finishing up the landing gear. And another thing, that's not 3 16 of an inch. So I'm gonna have to take my permagrit needle file, if I can get it to focus, and make it fit. Just have to, you know, run up and down until the wire goes in. I want to make it go in snugly. I don't want it to sit in there loose. But as it is right now, the wire won't even go in there. This is a really bad uh, design on this deal. So it is what it is though. All right, so I did a dry fit. I put the landing gear braces in there. And as you can see on the right wing, it's protruding on the forward side and on the left wing it's protruding on the back side and so what I'm going to do what I noticed is if you look put those two together one's it's thinner here thicker here thinner here thicker here so I'm going to flip this one around make my groove here. That way, at least the landing gear will line up the way it's supposed to, and then I'll have to modify that block to where I can get my landing gear down in there and it line up in the groove. So that's my plan. Here's what I did. I just, instead of making a huge notch, I just did a uh, 3 16 inch hole in there. I'm still going to have to modify that. In order to get the landing gear down in there, but it lines up anyway. I might put some more uh, plywood on the top here just to give me some extra thickness there. Because I'm going to take another 16th out of that. So that's my predicament. Okay, there's a dry fit. <clears throat> Hasn't been glued in yet, but I got them situated. And if you look lengthways, the landing gear is perfectly lined up. So we'll get this glued in. Not sure how I'm gonna, I'm gonna clamp the one side. I'm not sure how I'm gonna clamp this side because you know I got my sheeting, so I'll have to figure something out. Okay, so we'll take this landing gear off. And we'll get these glued in. They get glued in towards the spar and these are flush to the rib on this side too. We'll get that set up. <laughs> what I did here is I just ran a drill bit, 3 16 drill bit down it, and that made it perfect.
as with everything in these kits, you want to you want to pre-assemble them dry before you glue anything, just to avoid like you know glue globs holding things up and stuff like that. I got a glue glob on that spar that I'll have to get off. I'm gonna do it with my carving tool. Take a little bit off the time and check your work. A little bit more. right there in the corner. I'm just taking that glue fill it off of that spar where, where it meets the rib. <clears throat> so this sits flat on the rib. Get in there. So worst comes to worst, I'm going to take a little bit off this tab here. It's just an alignment tab anyway. And voila, there it is. So that one's set. This one will go over here. Make sure it's in the same situation. And then it is. Got to get rid of some glue globs.
And this one will be easy to do because it, it just clamps there. All right, that's that. Now we'll make some, uh, mix up some epoxy and glue these on. Okay, for this one, I'm going to mix up a little more epoxy because I'm going to do both sides. Still not gluing the main landing gear block in yet. <clears throat> I'll do that after these set up. Start with this one. Try to hold on to your epoxy brush. I never used to use epoxy. I used to always use just thick CA or even medium CA, but lately I've been using it in my builds. Make sure it's flush and I'm going to use this just to push up against it. I might even put a pin in there to hold it tight. You always want to double check, make sure it's seated all the way against the spars. Otherwise, your uh, landing gear braces aren't going to be even. Okay. That's good. Then we'll do this one. What's that? Okay, I got uh, a brace holding that on and they're clamped up both sides. 
flesh with the rib. Flush with the rib. Same on this side. After that cures up, we'll get these landing gear right, or things in there, thingy, whatever you want to call these, plates, landing gear plates, that's what we'll do, be back in a minute, okay, time to glue in the landing gear braces, or uh, what do they call them, landing gear supports, so we'll once again use epoxy, I'm going to apply this semi-liberally. Got to be careful around that hole, though. Some paper towels and clean up this excess. Just putting a little epoxy fill fill it in there. And when I flip the wing over, I'll put, I'll reinforce the back side of that. So we'll let that set up. Okay, landing gear braces, epoxied in. We'll let that cure up and then we'll continue on with the wing. Next up is the cap strips and the uh, wing tips. So we'll get those done. Okay, next step is to install the cap strips. I'm going to install them, but this one I'm going to split this cap strip because the block is too high, so I'm going to just ride the uh, rib. And we'll go ahead and install the cap strips all along. Same way with the side, I'll split that one. And after that, we get to uh, sand this trailing edge flat and install the wing tips. 
So we get set up and do this. So on this one, I'm still going to measure the full length. I'll get this one glued in and I'll bring you over and show you what I did. <clears throat> Can't forget, gotta mark my ribs. That way I can center my cat strips. Don't have to mark that one because it's going flush with the tip.
So here's what I mean by splitting that cap strip. Now this is all recessed. So what I'm gonna do is put some 16th inch sheeting in here. That should be enough to get me flush with the rest of the rest of the wing. And if, it, and if it's a little high, I'll just sand it to the right uh, height. That'll neaten up that area, and when I go to Monaco, it'll look a lot nicer. This wing video has been taking forever and it's already over three hours long.
nice not to have all that waste. What I'm doing is siding down the trailing edge at the edge of the trailing edge. Just marking a tick mark on either side of this cap strip. And then I'll cut leaving the marks I made. That way I can, if it's too big, I can sand to it. But you want it to fit semi-tight, but not so tight that it pushes in on the trailing edge. That's perfect. side and I'll do the other side off camera. All right, that completes the uh, right side of the underside of the wing. I'll do the left side off camera and then I'll bring you back when I'm done. Okay, we're all done cap stripping. show you my idea for capping this all off so that it looks neater and 
on your Monaco, all you'll have is that slot there. I did this one off camera. And I basically just took 16 inch sheeting and just cut this slot out of it and glued it on and sanded it flush. And it's gonna be nice when it's uh, when it's Monaco. But uh, I'll show you how I did it on this one. I'll get you set up real close, as close as I can get you. Okay, where I have you set, I'm not gonna be able to show you what I'm doing off camera, but I'll explain it to you. I'll show it to you up here. <clears throat> and then, uh, and then I'll uh, do it. So I had some extra trailing edge stock, so basically all I did, I'll square this off. <coughs> I'm just squaring this off in my, in my uh, miter box. So I just place it. And mark where my cap strip is. And I'll cut it to length. Cutting it to length, that's all. Okay, so I cut it a little bit long, that's fine. <clears throat> I'll just cut some, or shave some off with the sanding bar. Okay, so it's gonna fit. <coughs> it's gonna fit like that. Now we're gonna mark the edge of the block on each side. Then I'll cut that off. Now that fits in there just like that <clears throat> perfectly. Of course, it's raised up on the sides, so I'll show you what I do with that after I get it glued in. So before I do that, though, I need to mark that slot. So the way I mark the slot is on the wing. So I marked it on the wing on either side. As you can see, <clears throat> I'm going to come in an eighth of an inch on each side, and I'm going to cut a slot like this on each side, an eighth of an inch in. Now I'm going to leave that cut, and what I'm going to do is I'll glue this on, and I'll use my knife and I'll just run it down in between here and I'll cut it flush with the edge of the block while it's glued on. <clears throat> so I'll cut these slots first. What did I do with my knife?
So as you can see, there's my slots. Now I'll glue this on. And after I get it glued on, I'll cut this slot in. And then I'll take my razor plane and plane it as close as I can get without cutting into my sheeting. Don't want to do that. So we'll, get, we'll glue that on now. It doesn't have to be perfect at this stage because you're going to use the razor plane to, and sanding bar to make it perfect. <clears throat> I'm just using the sanding bar to press evenly on it. Okay. Now we'll cut out that center. You got to be careful doing this. I learned on the last one, there's nothing backing up these eighth inch pieces here. So you want to be careful cutting up to them because you could cut that chunk out. I did on that other one, I had to glue it back in. So, so you just got to be careful. Now I'm just gonna run the knife up against the block. This will make for a nicer appearance. And here's the tricky one because the camera's in my way. Little test fit the lambing gear in there. See what it looks like. See, I just broke that again. Dang it. <clears throat> That's alright, I'll fix it in a minute. I kind of angle this back side. Just a hair because of the landing gear goes back. CA in there.
Alright, <clears throat> now I'll take the razor plane and carefully razor plane off just one layer of it one time. I'm just very lightly doing that. You hear me cussing? <laughs> I went too far. All right, I'm gonna leave it. I'm gonna leave it like that. Now we'll just take our sanding block and sand it nice and flush. Careful, you don't sand out here very much because you don't want to you don't want to sand your uh, a washboard or a starved horse look in your sheeting I, I don't like the sand on the sheeting so i'm just going to concentrate around this edge Another trick you can do, run some thin CA in the seam here. And sand on it like this, and it'll fill it in like glass.
When you go to Monaco with that, you won't see that at all. All right, I think that's it. Let's test fit the landing gear. <clears throat> there it is. I'll take you off the tripod and bring you around and show you. There's the right landing gear. Now it's a little recessed in here. That's no big deal. Whenever I go to put them straps on, I'll glue a piece of like 16th ply or something on the strap and then screw it down and it'll push up against the landing gear. There's the left side landing gear. I think it looks a lot neater than the last time I did one of these things. And it should be perfectly parallel. And it is. All right, so next up, we got to sand that trailing edge and put the tips on. Okay, I sanded the trailing edge off camera. Uh, basically, just put it on my sanding bar and just, you know, did one of these things until it was nice and even all the way across. I put a straight edge on it to make sure that it was straight, and it still is, so we're uh, ready to do that. But as mentioned earlier in my video, I'm out of memory on my phone, so I'm going to end this section of the wing build. It's, almost, it's over three hours anyway. And uh, we'll do a part two. I'll upload this tonight and uh, delete all that footage off my phone. And then we'll uh, continue on with the wing build. All I got left to do is the wing tips, the trailing edge ailerons, and the uh, wing will be done, aside from the final sanding. So... If you like this type of content, consider subscribing to my channel and uh, be sure and hit that notification bell so that you could be notified of future uploads. And be sure and like and share my videos. I really appreciate it. And until part two, thanks for watching.